So what's going on here is um, I've got a lap steel and it's tuned to, uh, to open E. So I've got a E, B, E, G sharp, B, E. And one of the big things with steel is I like to think of these uh, strings as their intervals uh, to what they are to the key that I'm in. So what I've got is I've got a root, fifth, root, major third, fifth, and a root. And um, that, of course, move, uh, doesn't change as I move up the, uh, of the fretboard. If I'm in A, I've still got that same thing going on. And uh, what's really cool about this tuning is I can play a major chord like this. And it's very, um, it's like there's kind of a rock and roll uh, element to it. It's, it's a very familiar sounding um, inversion of, of an A major chord. And um, what's nice is I've got access to um, a couple of different ways to play a minor chord and a dominant seventh chord um, very easily in here. Um, so there's an A, D, and an E. So that's like a root, uh, uh, that's a one four five uh, at the fifth fret, tenth fret, and uh, the twelfth fret. Um, if I'm in the key of A, um, what's what's really neat about uh, also being tuned to open E is that I can kind of mimic some pedal steel stuff. Pedal steel is um, predominantly tuned to an E nine, where um, most of those ten strings are focused around an open E uh, tuning. So. Um, one of the main fundamental things with uh, this instrument is uh, the right hand. It's, um, it's getting down the, the muting that's going on and um, kind of keeping your fingers, your fingertips kind of pressed onto the strings that uh, aren't being played um, in kind of a, a seesaw way. So um, I can kind of show that off with a couple of blues licks real quick. If I were to play something in like a, a kind of a bluesy A. Mm -hmm. So you can see just with a couple little moves that what my fingers are doing is they're kind of seesawing back and forth between the note that I'm playing and then instantly muting to, uh, to get to the next note. And my index finger is, is uh, and my, my uh, middle finger are picking up a lot of the slack while my thumb is doing a lot of the attacking. Um, So some other stuff going on, um, I've got a volume pedal here, I've got a little bit of slapback, I've got some reverb on, and what the reverb and the, the slapback help me do is um, mute down while, uh, while I change positions. So um, some other techniques I really like to use with this instrument, um, in an A, So these are some artificial harmonics um, where I just put my finger uh, 12 frets from the fret that I'm on and then I use my uh, middle finger to kind of um, pluck behind it, so. Um, another thing that you can do uh, with a lap steel is you can uh, in open E tuning is it's very easy to do some behind the bar bends on the B string, and what that does is it's one of those really basic moves on a pedal steel. Um, your first couple pedal steel moves are really um, manipulating this G and this B string up to form the four chord um, without having to really move your hands on a pedal steel. So um, with a lap steel, you can mimic that a little bit by manipulating the B string or the G string. Um, I have not gotten into manipulating both, but I use my uh, my pinky here so I can go from a, for example, from a D up to a G.
So that's kind of going back and forth between a D at the 10th fret. And then on guitar, of course, um, if I were to move everything up a string, I'd have a power chord, major chord, uh, that's a G. And so that's kind of what's behind me doing that behind the bar bend on a B string, is I'm getting to that G chord and then kind of coming up to the 15th fret um, to hammer it home that I'm going kind of back and forth between a one and a four. Um, so for this song, that we're working on, there's um, kind of a, a typical verse cycle of uh, A, D, B minor, G, E, and then that changes slightly um, to get to the A at the end of the verse, and then uh, in the chorus, there's kind of a standard cycle of a four, five, one going on with kind of a neat little move at the end where he goes down to this F chord, um, and then it all wraps up with this kind of very rock and roll G, D, uh, A move. I'm at the end of those chords. So I'm just gonna play these chords through really simply uh, in this open E tuning. A. Now, at this point, I think it's really important to go over the minor chords and the way that I play them on here. So there's a couple different ways. You can play a B minor at the seventh fret if you just avoid the major third string. Or you can play a B minor um, by playing the root and the minor third at the third fret. And you can think of that B minor chord um, in the same way that you think of it on guitar when you play it at the second fret, um, spanning from the second to the fourth fret, there's a B minor chord there. And um, when you tune a lap steel and this third string up to a, a major third, um, you end up finding these two notes uh, with a flat bar right there at that third fret. So the way I kind of remember that is it's always the fret in between where it would be uh, kind of spanning on a guitar. So for example, an E minor chord on a lap steel would be at the eighth fret. I'm playing these two strings right here, the uh, traditionally the B and the G string, now the B and the G sharp strings um, to play that minor chord. So for example, B minor, E minor, and, uh, and other ways to play those, B minor, uh, of course, avoiding this uh, G sharp string. That second time I kind of accidentally hit that G sharp, you could hear an instant major tonality in that B. Um, if that ever happens, um, just mute the string as fast as you can. I like to kind of, uh, as a safeguard, hold my finger um, on that major third string while I'm, if I'm in a show or something, uh, just to make sure I don't accidentally hit it um, in the heat of the moment. And the nice thing about these partial chords is that they, um, when you have bass and you have guitars and you have other instruments playing, really all this instrument is called on is um, to have kind of a very nice voice and to kind of uh, help imply those chords. So what's great is that you can play just little pieces of, uh, of these chords and still get uh, a lot of mileage out of them. Another really cool move with this song, so you've got a, a root and a fourth, so you can kind of bounce in between using that behind the bar bend trick I was doing. But what's also really neat about a lap steel in this tuning is that you've got some slants that you can do um, that are just very basic and can sound really nice um, with a little bit of reverb. I like to just use one main set and I kind of think of it as like a Steve Cropper move because um, these chord shapes remind me of, uh, for example, what he would do on Soul Man or uh, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay um, in, in A. It's just these two right here. And I kind of think of like a... Of course, a great trick on lap steel, if you're always a little feeling a little pitchy on something, if you give it a little bit of a vibrato, you can kind of fudge that uh, fundamental note and kind of uh, make, it, make it still work with a little bit of reverb and stuff. So um, what I'm doing there is I'm playing the um, sixth fret, third string, and the seventh fret of the first string, and then I'm coming up here to the eighth and the ninth. Um, on a guitar, you can play these moves um, on the same fret, of course. You can kind of come up at a fifth fret uh, guitar chord in A, and then you can come up to the seventh and the ninth frets and play those moves um, pretty easily. Um, but on a lap steel with this major third uh, tuned third string, um, and of course these two strings are tuned up, 
you've got to kind of do a little bit of a slant. And that can sound really nice if you're playing an A and you want to come up to D, you can do something like this. So kind of a neat way to get around. You can you have this slant here at this eight, nine. I'm playing these two notes right here. Hopefully you can see them. And uh, coming up here and I'm playing these same two strings, the first string and the third string, and I'm just up at the 10th fret. Another thing I like to do with lap steel is I just I like to just come down a half fret with some stuff. It can give me a little bit of that pedal steel sound. Because if you think about the chord, what's kind of nice is you've got a uh, you've got a root here. But right behind it, you've got a major seventh, which which is such a um, such a strong suggestion of a major chord and uh, something very much in that scale. Um, sitting back here at this, and of course these other two E strings, you have the same move. You've got a major seventh just hiding one fret back. Um, you know, on this G on this uh, G sharp string on your major third string. Uh, C sharp in the key of A, you've got a C, you've got a minor third just sitting back. So these notes all kind of work, of course, on this fifth right here, your second string. Um, you've got a flat fifth, which is a very bluesy thing. So there's a lot, um, there's a lot of cool color with just kind of coming back one fret when you're playing a chord. There's a lot of uh, neat texture there, uh, depending on what strings you play. So we've covered major chords, minor chords. Um, you can play kind of a seventh chord. Um, you've got the um, you've got the flat seventh, and you've got the fifth just hiding three frets up from your uh, your chord. So if you're an A. <laughs> So I just came up uh, to a uh, to an eighth position, and I just played these two strings. I played the uh, the G sharp string and the B string. And when you've got a band going and you're on that uh, A chord, that can sound really bluesy, um, kind of emphasizing those two notes out of the chord. So um, another thing that's really nice is behind the bar bending with these uh, with these chords. So if I play an A. So that was just a little bit of me cycling from A to D to B minor to G to E. And I, um, I was going in a few different places. So I've got an E here and I've got my two slants up here above the 12th fret, just like I was showing on the A. Um, of course, if I pull up right here uh, in a seventh position, I've got an E major chord. Um, I've got an E major chord here. I can pull one up here. Um, I've got a, I've got a G here, I've got a G up here, and I've got a G hiding above the uh, D chord at the 10th fret here. So I can, uh, I can do this all with, uh, with behind the bar bends if I want. A. And then uh, B.
So you can see there's a lot of country sounds going on there. I'm, I'm kind of going between those chords and looking for where I can just get a couple notes out of the chord up high, or I can uh, uh, bend into the chord from a chord that's also happening to, happening to be in the song, um, which is really cool because the G sits on top of the D, um, the D sits on top of the A, I've got an E hiding here um, under the B minor if I want to release that. And then at this third fret, I've got a G chord. And then I've got that B minor hiding with just these two strings. So you've got a few positions that you can really work around and, and get some cool things going on. The chorus, um, for this song, I would play really straight. So it goes to a four chord, five chord, one chord a few times, and then it's got this really cool thing where it falls from A. A, G, F. I don't like to get too fancy on stuff like that. I think that um, it might be nice to just come up on a G, F like this. And then when the song comes back in, it's a B minor. And then a very quick D, E. And then it's got that cool thing going on where it goes. So that's kind of the whole song. It, it just moves around those chords. Now for a solo, you can come up. So you can just play around with those shapes. So it's really nice is when you get your uh, when you get your muting going and you kind of find your spots, um, you know, and kind of get used to being on the frets and the vibrato, and you can kind of just move around and find some shapes. Um, the sound of the instrument and uh, the simple the simplicity of uh, how good it can sound with very little, I think, is a huge part of um, of uh, playing a solo.